Hi. I'm throwing a lot out there, so I want to recap a little bit and take you through this process. Okay, so that we're now in a time of transition where the time where we're entering into the judgment of God, which is really the exposing of all the works of wickedness. Okay, that means all the things that have been hiding wickedness are going to fall away. So this is so this is what it's going to look like. The fire that comes upon the earth actually comes through those who are filled with God's spirit. Because when you, once you're filled with God's spirit, the words that you speak are God's words. Okay? And God creates. And that is something so tremendous. Because when you are listening to the voice of God from within you, that's how you're recreated. That's how your mind is renewed. Because He speaks truth to you and it recreates you. I have experienced this. That's why understanding is so important. He is speaking those words to your soul and it transforms your soul. That's how he transforms you, his words. It's, that's why you know Christ was the word of God, that spirit within us. By his words he creates, he destroys. That's all it is. That's how powerful his words are. So when you're communing with the very Spirit of God, you're receiving His words to your spirit. And they bring a tremendous healing. That's how Jesus could just speak and heal. That's the power of those words. So those that are being filled with the fullness have a very great power in their words now. It is creating. And it's also destroying. And what's destroying is this pit. That means the pit that is within us, it is destroying the idols, okay? Because that's how it works. The pit within you, it is the darkness within you, it comes down to those lies. Remember that you're not valued and that you're not loved. And again, this healing of God is a very real thing that happens and it comes within us. So we are the ones that transform. So all these bondages that have kept us bound to death are being purged. Okay, so this may sound, you know, simplistic or not, you know, the fireworks in the sky that you're used to, but this is what's real. Okay, and if you want to make it through this fire, if you want to know how to walk and come out of the lake of fire, and come purified, this is the journey that I'm going to describe for you. Okay, because those of the firstborn have already gone through this. They're receiving the fullness, they are starting to shine, and as they shine, their words are getting more and more powerful. That means their words are bringing fire, because they're light, they're love. They are the words of God, and you know what? Evil cannot stand in that presence. The, so here's what I was talking about. So I'm talking about Adam and Eve, okay? Because this is a very uh, clear situation of which we all go through. What we experience in our life at the very core is we wake up to the reality out of our childhood of feeling shame. Okay? That means there is something about us that is rejected. It's not accepted. We don't receive love. We're neglected, we're abandoned. We're, there are so many things that happen to our spirit that causes us to feel that shame. Okay, it's a humiliation, it's an embarrassment, it's just that it's this weakness of ugliness. And it is a horrible feeling. What do you want to do? You want to clothe, you want some garments, you want something on you that keeps others from seeing that shame and from you feeling that shame. That's representative of the fig leaves that Adam and Eve put on, okay? But when God saw it, what that looks like from his perspective is idols. Because what would heal that shame is his perfect love. But instead of having his perfect love, you've gone to an idol. You've gone to something else to cover you. You're not looking for him to be your covering. 
That's why it says God's a jealous God. It's like because he wants to abide with us in a true bond of perfect love, okay? Because that is where we are in a place of perfection. We experience the greatest joy and abundance and delight, but so does he, okay? Because that's what it feels like to give and receive perfect love. So when they had those fig leaves, they had, and once they fell, they cut themselves off from God's love. They moved themselves out of that, and now they have an idol instead. Okay? And it is very hard to let go of those idols that are covering your shame. Because they are covering your shame, and you do not want to feel that. If you have felt that in your life, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That is the last thing you want to feel. So what do people do to cover? What do the fig leaves look like? And most of us have many. Okay, on one level, they look like things that are acceptable to the world, to some of the world, <laughs> not those who are truly seeking in truth, but things like being a very successful businessman, of being one who, a woman that puts on this now lust image, right? So she just puts on this very sexy, lustful image, and, you know, all the men are attracted to her, and they're now accepting her. So any shame that she had, you see how she's not feeling that because now she's getting all of this attention and value, but it's a very degrading and it's not real and it's not true. And all the shame that she has is actually still there. She's just covering it. But now she's a slave to that lust image. That's why you get all these surgeries and all this money and time that women spend trying to preserve an image because it's ultimately for some of them, it has become their idol by which it covers their shame. Okay, someone else, they may cover their shame by being a wonderful mother, okay, and trying to be a good mother. Maybe in their past, you know, maybe they had an abortion, or maybe it was the way they were treated when they were younger. But their solution, okay, whatever came along that made them not feel that shame to some degree then became their idol. So they're going to be the perfect mother, or they're going to be the perfect businesswoman. Okay, so now it's going to be their intelligence that is going to be covering their shame. It's going to, and for men, it's going to be their success in business. It's going to be the amount of money they have. It's going to be the things that they possess. It'll be the power that they display, the control that they have. So all these things are their images, their idols, their fig leaves. They're things that are, we are trying to, they're our garments. They're the things that we're putting on in our reality to make ourselves acceptable not only to others but to ourselves because you don't want to see your own shame okay and so as long as you, and you're very now you're a slave to that idol okay if that is what's covering your shame you serve it you sacrifice you spend a lot of energy on it and you see this for example people in business will go to great lengths sacrifice their health sacrifice their family to maintain that status of that type of a business person, okay? They will also manipulate, lie, cheat, all these things to maintain or to advance. And that's the thing, you are never really satisfied when you have those idols because they don't satisfy you because you're just covering the problem, the disease that's within you, that death that that shame is coming from. Okay, you're just covering it so it still exists. So no matter what you do, you will never be satisfied. But every time they grow, it's like a false satisfaction. Right? But it's not real. When God, now that he's here, his throne has been established through the firstborn, in his presence, all those idols are going to fall. So all those ways that people have been trying to cover that feeling of shame they're going to just start crumbling and decaying. They're not going to be able to cover the shame anymore. That shame is going to start coming through. Okay, and how that specifically looks, you know, it's going to be different for different people depending on what's happening. And that's part of why people aren't going to understand what's going on because it's going to just look like hardships in different people's lives. 
and it's not like one plague that everybody everybody has that everybody looks the same it's people are all going to be going through these hardships but they're all they all are relative to that person's journey it's their refining fire god that idol is falling down in his presence but it's to expose what's really there so it can be healed it's like they got to expose the wound Okay, the true state of your soul because those idols had deceived people to think they're okay, to think they're in life, to think that they're a good person. But that's not where they're at, okay? And that's another one that's very important to understand is the covering of religion. Okay, and this is a very big one because it has God's name all over it. But what people do to cover that shame that they feel they put on a cloak of religion. So that's where they get into the rituals, okay, and the acts that they do. That's why they cling to the ritual acts that they do in a church of going through those motions because that's their covering, you see? So whenever you say you got to put that aside, they can't let it go because that's part of the covering that's helping to cover their shame, whether they're aware of it or not. And let me tell you, that's the thing about abiding in the darkness and in blindness is that you can't see. Okay, so you can't see your shame. You can't, you're, you're disconnected. You have created illusion that you've fallen for. But these are the things that are going to be starting to be exposed is that shame is going to come forth. And I'll address more in the next video.